Hi there, Wycliffe Barrett, x Plane Dedicated. Today we're going to look at the Tolis A340-600. We have waited for this for so long and finally it's here. Costs $89.99, which works out at around about £65.50 at the present rate. This aircraft is the one that we've all been waiting for for such a long time. Tolis have knocked it right out of the park with this one. It is absolutely incredible. Full disclosure here, of course, uh, I paid for this aircraft. I bought it from xplane.org uh, yesterday, flew it last night. And what can I say? I mean, it looks stunning, as you can see here. It looks absolutely amazing. But in all honesty, it's an Airbus. And all Airbus aircraft, you can jump into them and they're like, the A320 is like the A319, uh, the A330, and the A340. Here we have it here on the stand at Cardiff. I thought I would take it a quick flight just up to Brecon and back again. Don't really need to do a long haul flight to find everything about this aircraft. It's got an AVI tab and uh, it's got taxi cameras, which you'll see in a moment. It looks absolutely beautiful. The sound on this is amazing. I didn't record the sound because unfortunately at the same time as doing this flight, I was having a conversation with somebody else. So I didn't record the sound, but take it from me, the sound of this is absolutely stunning. Here you can see the taxi camera in action. Um, unfortunately, in the top part of the taxi camera picture, you see the nose wheel. The nose wheel doesn't turn, it stays straight. So you've got to really practice with this. And you've got to, as a friend of mine says, really steer it into the corners. You've got to really drive it into the corners, get your, the nose of the aircraft over the, over the uh, farther over than you'd anticipate. Here I made a little bit of a mistake, I nearly cut the grass, so, but not to worry. Got onto the runway for our flight out to just out to Brecon, VOR, and then back again to Cardiff. As I say, absolutely stunning. Everything about it is wonderful. The uh, Thrustmaster side stick and throttle works with it perfectly by default, although I did have one little niggle, which was my fault entirely. I'd forgotten how to ensure that uh, the reverse thrust was working, and really I needed to switch on a toggle in the Tolis interactive system, uh, and that's all I needed to do. So, as we barrel down the runway here at a, an amazing rate of knots, you've got to be very, be very careful that you don't have a tail strike. And if you look on the primary flight display, you'll see an inverted V there. You do not lift any higher than that. So when you pull back to uh, lift off, make sure you don't go any higher than the V with your flight directors and you won't have a tail strike. There you are, taking off on a Brecon 1 Alpha departure on my way to Cardiff. So I'm gonna try and read through some of the systems, but there's an awful lot. To start off with, there's a detailed FGMS. And there's three independent MCDUs providing real life FMGS programming capability. You can put everything into this. You can put fixes in, you can put holds in, you can direct twos, anything you want. Absolutely amazing. It's got full SIDSTAR and Airways support. Uh, also, it's got A424 leg types, ARC, course heading or intercept, radius to fix, holdings, etc. And it is completely full. I mean, it is probably the best MCDU that I've seen. It, you know, it's fully functional. Um, as I say, I've got the AVI tab. You can see the throttle quadrant there, and uh, I'm just messing around with with the uh, flight plan, just making sure I had everything set up for my arrival. Um, there's got accurate systems, so it's a fly-by-wire system with reversion between normal law and alternate law one and alternate law two, and direct law as per the real life logics of, uh, of the aircraft. There's a quantitative bleed model considering the bleed, ma bleed mass flow for the engine start, wing anti-ice, air conditioning packs, there's so much in there. I can't read the whole list because it just it's massive. Detailed model of each Adaroo, including alignment, small pressure sensor differences between the units, switching of sources for PFDs. The list goes on and on. 3D modeling, well, you can see what the 3D modeling is like in the cockpit here. Absolutely breathtaking. Detailed 3D cockpit with animated switches, and there is a new mouse gesture system for interaction with push-pull knobs, emulating the motion on the knob with the mouse. Now, previously, you would just click on the mouse, and you can see me here struggling, trying to find where the uh, 
click spots was and, and I didn't I hadn't turned on the new mouse gesturing and you see me struggling trying to get it to change over to hundreds as a thousand because I wanted to, to to descend and unfortunately I couldn't find the click spot and then I remembered uh, have I got the mouse gesturing on so quickly I went into the uh, into the tallest interactive system control system to check and and you'll see me here any moment now I'm pondering what do I need to do ah yes I need to sort out this so I went into the uh, tallest interactive system just trying to find it here there we go and we'll pull it up on screen and it's under general settings and it's one that right at the top there it says user interface you got use fcu mouse gestures turn that off turn that off and then as we go back i just I, what i'll do is i'll pull that up bigger so you can see it you can see how it changes there we are so you click that off use fcu mouse gestures turn that so it's off and you'll be fine and then you'll get the new interactive system you see it there you've got a hand with two arrows and get a finger so you have a finger to push in and a hand to pull out so pull out turn yeah so that I'm on I'm controlling it push it in so you get the red the uh, dot at the side so you've got that new gesturing system which is really unique to the uh, a340 600 i haven't seen nothing like it in any other aircraft um, or by any other developer tallis have inv invented that new system so to speak and uh, it works very very well so coming back 3d modeling detailed cockpit lighting with reading lights console lights tray table lights and of course I haven't shown you here, but uh, the tray tables come out. Um, they look absolutely amazing, beautiful animation. You can pull those out, put those back in. Look at the engines here, absolutely wonderful. Really, really well modeled. Everything about the aircraft is so well modeled. Graphics, the animation on the side stick, especially if you've got the Thrustmaster side stick, uh, as, as I have, absolutely marvelous. Also, just talking about that, the quadrant, so the throttle quadrant, if you've only got the, the two throttle levers, they will operate all four engines. Okay, so when throttle lever one will um, operate two engines and, and throttle lever two will operate the other two engines and similarly with the engine start switches engine start one will operate engines run one and two and engine start switch two will operate engines three and four okay so you don't need a, f a full quadrant throttle um, uh, set to, to fly the aircraft brilliant it's got four class four class passenger cabin with under four lavatories and crew rest now for me this is where i think i, I have a thing about custom cabins and really we don't need them to be quite frank you just don't need these custom cabins it's uh, it's actually a bit daft it's, it's just not necessary in my view um you know some people love them um i just think personally i'm not that bothered if there was no custom cabin at all it wouldn't bother me i i very rarely fly from the back seat i might look at wing views occasionally uh generally i will use wing views if i was um if i was um flying with some friends i might use wing views then but certainly um it's not something that i'm that bothered about here you can see me on final approach into runway 30 um, the weather's beautiful and if you're interested I'm using the latest update for enhanced skyscapes and I'll do I might do a live stream of that update over the next couple of days so coming back to um, some of the features we've got uh, situation loading and saving uh, you can save a flight at any time which you've been able to do in 321 previously uh, so if I wanted to, I could save this flight here now as a situation and I could load up and it would be on approach to Cardiff. I could practice that approach over and over again. Um, 
auto saving also allows recovery so you can set auto save and you can recover your flight even if you were online and it crashed you could come back and recover the flight exactly where you were all parameters would be set fmc would be set everything would be set and you could carry on with that um, there's four different startup configurations cold from cold and dark to engines running and ready to go uh, there's in-screen pop-up displays um, so I could pop out those displays and put them onto another monitor which is what we've seen before and there's even adjustable wing flex so you can adjust the strength of the wing flex in the in the ISCS um, you can turn off your screen reflections uh, there's an auto updater by Skuncraft which is uh, vital these days that they have auto updates going back to the FMGS um, there's altitude and speed constraints, same as the real aircraft. Um, there's Navid auto tuning, there's pilot item database such as pilot fixes. Um, there's Equitime point computation in nearest airports page. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. The systems of this aircraft are phenomenal. Now then, coming into land, I was told you've got to be very, very careful because it's a long aircraft and you need to be very aware of you know, the length of the aircraft and also not to have a tail strike. I watched a couple of videos from streamers last night and um, one very famous streamer on his first landing, he made a complete and utter mess of it, he dumped it into the ground. Here you see me coming into Cardiff. Um, I love the shadow underneath the aircraft there. Nose up attitude, no tail strike, and smooth as butter. And that was my first landing in the aircraft. I had been given some advice about uh, a particular feature on the primary flight display. It's known as the flying V. And you saw it as I took off. And when you're coming into land, you do not come higher than the flying V. If you pitch up too much from the flying V, you can see it there on the primary flight display, then you're gonna have a tail strike. Well, there you have it. That's my flight from Cardiff up to Brecon and back down again in the incredible A34600. If I've got one gripe, and you know, it makes a change for me to say something bad apparently, but the one thing that I dislike about the aircraft is the cabin i don't personally i i don't see a need for cabins i fly from the front seat not the back seat um, but if you like that kind of thing the cabin in this is pretty smart uh, i've just got some still photographs still images here that i took and a beautiful aircraft in the virgin livery um, there are a number of liveries available on explain.org here you can see some of the cabin the uh, catering and first class uh, it's an incredibly long aircraft as well very very long um, I haven't I've never flown on a 340 I've been on an A380 and that was big hope you found this review useful oh this is the fe one feature I think is really silly in the back of all the seats of the aircraft you've got a camera view of where you are and you can see that I'm on stand seven at Cardiff Airport and that is on the back of every seat there you are I I think I, do, I just don't see the need for that but anyway hope you found the review review useful my name is Wycliffe Barrett explain dedicated look out for a rebranding of the channel and the Facebook group don't forget to hit like thumbs up comment and subscribe